Hello, in this video we're going to look at Class Dojo, which is a behavioral management and tracking system. It allows um, the teacher to give students or groups of students or the entire class points or badges based upon positive or negative behaviors. It also allows the teacher to track student attendance. Um, parents can be added into the Class Dojo account so that the teacher can send instant messages to them and the parents can send instant messages back to the teacher. It also allows the teacher to post to the class story, which kind of has a Facebook kind of look to it, so they can make posts about what's going on in the class. It also allows the teacher to post or review student portfolios that are built into the system, which also kind of have a Facebook look to them. So let's check out how to use Class Dojo. The first step for the teacher is to create their Class Dojo account. So they would just go to classdojo.com and choose to sign up as a teacher. Know that there's also the Class Dojo app, which is usually how students and parents will probably interact with the teacher. So they're welcome to download it that way and log into their account. Upon logging into the account, they'll be able to see the classes that they already have or they'll be able to make a new class. By making a new class, you just want to fill out the name, the grade, and then what you would like to share. So in this case, you can choose to only um, show positive points with the parents, show all points with the parents, or don't share points with the parents. I recommend showing all points. That way this, uh, the parents know if, they're get, if the student's getting points for being positive or points for um, negative behaviors. Then we create the class and we're in. The next step is to add in your students. So we'll choose to add students. Here you just want to add their first and last name, or you can copy and paste from a student list if you probably already have it from maybe Word or whatnot, or you can import it from Excel. Either way, that's how you add in your students. So now that we've been, they've been added in, we'll save them. Note that students can log into their Class Dojo account and they can actually change their avatar if they like. So we can give points at this point under the classroom tab. We can give points to the entire um, class if we want to. So we can choose the whole class and say that these are positive behaviors or need works behaviors. So say that everyone in the class is doing a great job of participating. I can give a participating point to everyone and all four students get it and it's one point to everyone. Now what if Minnie's doing something in particular um, that's very great? So we'll be able to choose Minnie and maybe she's doing a great job of working hard. So I can add her a point and it will give Minnie a point. While you're adding points, you can choose to add it as a post as well. This post will go onto that student's portfolio. So maybe I post that she's so hardworking and I give her the working hard um, point. In addition, know that if the parent had um, logged into their account um, or had set up their account, you could message the parent right from here as well. So in addition to giving positive behaviors, we can give um, not so positive behaviors under needs work. And then you can add skills as to what might need some work. So maybe I see that not turning in homework is something that is a common um, trait that's occurring. So I can make a logo for that, put um, not turning in homework, and determine how many points are taken away based upon that. So I can save that skill if I want to, and I can actually come through here and add in those negative behaviors if I want to. Know that under positive, we can also add skills. There are some by default, but we can always add our on, or we can edit ones that are already there. So maybe if I really value teamwork, I can edit that and make it to where the student gets two points instead of one point for a teamwork. So we can add in another skill that's positive and save that. So maybe we need to put in some needs, but needs work behaviors. So maybe he didn't turn in his homework. So you see it minuses out his um, point so that he's back down to zero. You can add a special note if you want to. So I could choose add a note about Donald about no homework. And so I can give more specifics here so that there's a little bit more detail on that. In addition to giving individual points, we can actually make groups, um, specifically like if students are working in group work and you want to add points to the entire team. So we can choose to add a group, and maybe Daisy and Donald are in the duck group, and maybe 
Minnie and Mickey are in the mouse group. So there we have that. So now I can award points and award the entire group for doing something and it gives them the points as well. So now when we go back to individuals, we see that they've been added, um, in addition to their individual points, they were added group points as well. All of this is running through the Classroom tab. When you click on a student, know again you can get to their portfolio, which we'll talk about a little bit later here, as well as inviting their parents and getting to their, um, and, and messaging their parents um, as well here, which we'll talk more about in just a second. While we're here under the Classroom tab, notice that there are some things at the bottom that are things um, that might be in addition you might want to use. One is a timer, so you could put on a timer just and have this pulled up in class. And you could have it to where there's a timer just floating down in class, either a countdown or a stopwatch. Um, just so if you have this pulled up on the projector in class and you're giving points as necessary, you have this available as well. In addition to the timer, you have the select multiple where you can click on this and it allows you to select multiple students at the time um, to give feedback to. So that might help if you have a rather large class. A great tool is the random picker tool. So maybe that you're doing a project or you're doing an assignment in class and you want to randomly pick somebody to read the next question or maybe you're doing popcorn reading and you want to randomly pick somebody to read. You need somebody to be randomly picked. You can come and choose random and it will randomly pick a student for you. And then you can give feedback to that student if you want to or you could just have it randomly pick that student. Next is the attendance tool, which you can easily get down here under attendance. So here all are by default going to be marked as present, but maybe somebody's not here today and I can mark them as absent. I save that attendance and my attendance has been saved. Super easy to do. Next is the toolkit. So you can choose this at the bottom and it actually just gives you some ideas of different things that you can do. Again, here's a link to the timer and you could have it to set to where it's 15 seconds and it kind of blanks out the screen and it gives them the timer. You can always add 10 seconds if you want to, let it count down, what have you. So again, that's part of the special and it even changes color. So that's um, a special component that you can have under the toolkit. Something else is the random picker, which again is another uh, random picker tool. It just does the entire um, screen. So that's a tool under the toolkit. You also have a group maker, so where it'll just randomly make groups. So maybe I want two people per group, and it will randomly put people in the group. And again, it's not putting Daisy in there, remember, because we had marked her as being absent today. So that's why I didn't put her in a group. But if you just want to make a quick group, you can do that. In addition, you can do a noise meter, um, and so you can create that. And it just has to be able to pick up your volume in the classroom, so you have to have speakers, and you can have this turned on so as students are talking in the classroom, especially during maybe teams or groups or um, centers, you can see uh, the level of the noise. And so we can make it more sensitive or less sensitive, but obviously the louder it gets, the more um, it's getting a little bit too loud in the classroom. So it's kind of a noise meter that you can have, and you can adjust the sensitivity, but great for group work um, and center time. In addition to the toolkit, you have directions to where you can post directions for the students that will be displayed on the projector, especially if you just have Class Dojo pulled up in the classroom. So in this class, I, um, in this case, I can give it a name and then make a list of maybe the things that they're supposed to be doing for their morning routine. And I can go ahead and start now or I can save it for later if I want to. So in this case, I start now, it appears on the board and then the students can kind of see exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Next, we have the Think, Pair, Share. And so here are some um, suggested Think, Pair, Shares, but you can always make your own. So you have an activity there where they're going to um, do something on their own and then share it with their partner. And you can either save for later or you can start it now. And this again will be displayed on the board for you um, as they can work through the activity. The next on the toolkit um, is the date. So it'll just kind of show the date there. 
If you want to, you can do new, however, and add in a special announcement. This is where you could also add morning work. You can add in a welcoming message, whatever you would like to share. And again, you can save for later or start now, and it will just display it on the board as they are coming in. Notice that if you come back to these activities, they're saved, the ones that we just added to where we could display them later or we could edit them. So they're kind of saved in your account to where you can easily pull them back up if you need to later in the day. Lastly, we have music. So you can choose this and it will play music. You can either do focus music or active music and it'll just play right through um, the computer, right through your Class Dojo. So again, that's the toolkit of all the different resources. This is the attendance area to mark your daily attendance. Um, you're allowed to select multiple students. You can randomize and pick a random person, a timer, and then Big Ideas will actually take you to their blog to where you can come up and read about different ideas for um, different areas of the um, of Class Dojo. So it's kind of like a blog, a sharing area as well. So again, all of this was under the Classroom tab. Now let's talk about adding parents, but before we do so, notice under options, you can add co-teachers, and so that would allow you to put in a teacher's email, and that allows you to add in a co-teacher, especially if maybe you are, um, you maybe have um, a collaborative setting to where somebody else is in the classroom, or if you want your activity teachers to be able to access and edit and add points to your class dojo, you can add in a co-teacher as well. But now let's invite some parents, so we can choose invite parents, and we can either type in the email or the phone number of the parents if we already have that information. If we don't, we can download parent invites and it will create us a list of a paper-based invite that you can send to the students. It explains to them what, how, what to do, but here this is where you would cut this apart and send it to the students. So for Donald um, Duck and Donald Duck's parents, this these are the specifics. This is his class code. Notice that it's different. Daisy has a different class code because when you put in the class code, it is associating that parent to that student. So make sure that you send the right code to the right um, parent. You can also allow students to um, log into their Class Dojo accounts if you feel like that's appropriate for them. Um, so you can go to Options and Connect Students, and then you can determine how you want those students to be able to connect. So you can choose it where they scan a QR code, which might be easier for the youngest of students. Maybe the next step is for them to have to enter a class code, a text code that you give to them, or maybe you, they have to sign in with Google if they already have a Google account, which might be appropriate for older students. So then I selected for them to add in a text code. I display that class text code and it will give it to them and they are allowed to go ahead and put in that text code on their app. After they put in the code, they'll be asked to select their name from the list and then they'll be added into their account. Now, a special note with inviting parents, they will have to download the app. They will um, need to put in their code. Once they put in their um, code, it's going to ask them to put in their name, um, and then it will add them into the class. It also asks them to associate their email to it. So um, they do have to go through the process of really creating an account while the students don't necessarily have to do so. Um, if you have it turned on, which it is by default, once a parent adds, in, um, adds into your class, you will get an email for that. Um, if we just refresh this, we should also see that we have four students in the class and we have one parent now. So that leads us to the messages area. So notice that one parent is connected. So I can actually use the messages area to send um, Donald's parent, um, which is Daniel Duck. I can send him a message, um, almost like an instant message if needed. So I could go ahead and send this message, or if I want to schedule it for later, maybe I know that Daniel um, works nights, and so he might be asleep right now. Um, I can schedule it later, or I can schedule it, you know, whenever I would like to. But I'll go ahead and send it now. So it works just like an instant messaging. So um, Daniel will have, if he has the app downloaded, he'll get that message, and he can reply back instantly. And so it's basically like a text messaging service right within ClassDojo. 
Notice that if you are on your classroom um, profile, which is probably where you would be if you have class dojo pulled up in your class, um, in a, and a parent sends an instant message, you do get a little notice here, and then you'll have notifications that run here as well. So I'll be able to go back there, see that he has left me something, and then I can respond to that message. The next set of options are the portfolios and the class story. So we'll get to the class story first. And again, it's very much like a Facebook feed. It's almost like making a post um, on Facebook, but you're doing it for the Class Dojo account. So in this case, I can post reminders, I can add photos, files, um, or even a card, and I can post that information um, to the class story so that everyone can see it. So in addition to just adding text, you can add a card, which is kind of a cute little um, thing that is created by Class Dojo, um, and it's about different holidays, different things that are coming up, so you can make those if you want to. So with it being Thursday, maybe we'll do a thoughtful Thursday, um, and we can look at this. So I can just share that. And then I can add in a special message if I want to, or I can share this on the class story. I can share it to whichever class um, I would like to do so. As a note, the parents um, are also getting the information through Class Dojo, but they're also getting it attached to their email, and they can go into their settings and change that um, if they want to, but they're getting it double places. So now that we've posted to the Class Story, um, parents can go into the story, and they can actually see what's been created. And just like with a Facebook feed, um, if you allow for it, the parents can like the comments, they can make comments on their own, um, and you're able to see that um, that Donald's parent said that he is so excited. So you can um, view those different things as well. You can see who viewed it, you can see who liked it, and then of course you can see comments if you have that turned on in your settings. So that in summary is how the class feed for the most part works. And again, it's kind of just a matter of you posting um, information as the teacher and then parents liking it or commenting back to it. So the next thing is portfolios. So with the portfolios, you as the teacher can add different things to each student's portfolio. So maybe I can go to Donald's portfolio, add a post, and I can say something about Donald. I can upload a photo, especially if it's something I took in class um, of his work or whatnot, or add a file, maybe it is his work, that I want to upload and add to his portfolio. So I can add it and post it to his portfolio, and it will be added right there. The parent will get a notification knowing that you have posted that to the student's portfolio and they can go in and just like almost with the Facebook feed, they can make a comment, they can like it, that kind of thing. In addition to teachers creating um, and adding things to the student portfolio, of course the student can add to their own. So through the app, the student can go to the student portfolio area and they can choose to create new and they actually have the option of creating a journal which is more writing and typing based. They can upload a photo, they can upload a video, or they can create a drawing. When they choose to create a drawing, they actually get a whiteboard area where they can write and draw and add in stickers and then add a caption as well as a voiceover onto that portfolio and post it and that will it posted into the portfolio. While we're looking at the student view, um, they can also go into their settings and customize their monster. They can also pull a student report from their app and be able to see how many points they've earned, how many points they've um, been um, have been subtracted for needing work, and where they are um, in terms of that. This is what the view looks like for the teacher um, after the student has posted this. And see, this was a video um, that added a comment, so we can click on it. And the student drew on it, added a picture, but they also um, audio recorded onto it. So um, I can choose to approve it so that it can be shared um, as, it can, I can prove it so it can be shared with his parents. So in that case, I just want to approve it, and I can add a comment if I want to. But again, keep in mind that student added portfolios by default are going to need to be um, approved by the teacher. And so that is why, I don't know if you saw it to begin with, there was a little icon up here, a little uh, red mark saying that a portfolio item had been added. So I would have to go through and approve it for it to be officially added into the portfolio. In addition to students adding in random portfolio items, I can create an activity to where I ask the students to do a particular um, assignment or activity. 
So in this case, I'm making an activity for simple machines. I describe it. I want them to take a photo, so that's what's going to be required, and they can add a caption. I can also upload a worksheet um, if that was something that needed to be done. I can assign it to the class. And then this gives me um, a workflow of what will happen. The students will log in to do their activity. Um, I will approve their responses, and then it will be shared just like a regular portfolio item. Um, so in order to see that, I would go back to the portfolios, and I could go to this area for simple machines. I would be able to see what they had done, and then I could approve it, and it would be added into their portfolio. And see, I can see that nobody's um, nobody has submitted yet. Nobody's been approved. Um, there's four people that have not submitted yet. So in a in addition to doing your regular just portfolio items where students can add in their own items, we can also create assignments. So now that we've reviewed most of the main components of Class Dojo, know that you can come up here to your account and choose account settings and you can actually edit some things. In particular, you can change the messaging to where you mute it on the weekends or make it quiet so you don't necessarily have um, all your phone going off at all times. You can also download message history or the conversations with parents just if you want to keep that a hard copy for your records. You can also allow commenting on the class stories. By default, that was on, and you saw that one of the parents commented some of the things we added to the stories. If you don't want that to happen, you can turn it off. And then, of course, you can delete your account under Advanced if you need to. So that's an overview of using all the different features of Class Dojo.